Yeah. Hey everyone. Um, welcome to Open Office Hours eight, nine, ten, whatever. Um, glad to glad to have you all here. Uh, another week is done. Um, I hope that you guys are um, kind of able to do a lot of stuff now and uh, kind of grasp uh, what we're trying to do here. Um, is this week three? Can anybody uh, wake me up? It's week like end of week three, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. That's a, yeah. Time. Time really flies. Um. Yeah. Um. Today I kind of don't have uh, specific topics. I uh, received a question from Anya earlier, which was basically along the lines of um, how do we actually find jobs with the skill set that we are crying here, and uh, what is a common path for for Dune creators to take. Um. So I think I'll talk about that. Uh, first for a bit and then maybe um, if any of you have have questions on that or if we can just like have a have a like like light, light conversation about uh, about these topics that that would be quite cool and then um, if anybody has like topics around like dune finding tables whatever like um, we, we can go into that as well um, but maybe adding a bit more um, I, I don't know like context and color to to what we are actually trying to achieve here um, is a is a is a good idea um so basically uh, i i guess i can just start with my own story so um i uh i'm a business administration guy by by training and basically um i i taught myself dune back in like 2020 like september and um what i did was basically um there's this cool oh i'm not sharing my screen um share my screen New tab, go live. Um, so there's this protocol uh, called pickle.finance. And basically that was like the hot, the hot new shit uh, back in 20, uh, 2020. So around the time I started. And basically what I did uh, um, is I just started um, hanging out a lot in their Discord. And eventually like I was like, hey, like I found this cool tune, tool, which is Dune. And um, I, I, I just started to, uh, to do some analysis for them. And basically the way you find work in Web3 is like, it's kind of inverted. Like, of course there's like, there's like, we have a, we have a like bounty channel in Discord. So you, nope, you're not able to see my Discord screen. Uh, let me share my screen for a second as well. Uh, stop that. Share the full screen. Yes, this screen. Um, uh, yeah, let me, let me tell the story of uh, Pickle first. So basically, um, I, I hung out in their Discord a lot and uh, eventually um, I, I started making dashboards for them. And then there is a governance uh, forum for pretty much every every Web3, um, like company, DAO, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I actually made a proposal in there. Um, and this proposal was basically like, hey, um, I, I made this stuff and now I want to build more stuff, but I need funding for that because it's... Um, I don't know, like it's just, uh, how would I find this? There it is. Creation and maintenance of, of Dune Analytics dashboard. And basically what I did is like, I just wrote like, hey, here's who I am. Like, uh, this is what I did already, completed work, um, motivation, um, further thoughts, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, I requested eight ETH. At the time that was, <laughs> that was uh, not a lot of money. Uh, ETH was still like at 400 or something. So I think it came out to like $2,000. Um, of course, that's a lot more money now. So um, the, like you can't ask for, uh, I don't know, how much would this be? Eight times four, uh, $32,000 for your first dashboard. Um, but basically like um, that's what I did. And then like I, I, I kept updating the, the community on like my, my, my progress and stuff. And um, basically that's, that's how I got my first job in, in Web3. And it was not me like going to somewhere and like asking people like hey how can like um like not like i don't know i didn't ask for, for permission like i basically like as as i wrote this proposal i had already done work it's like you you basically like work in web3 is like you you are a contributor like you're not you're not like working somewhere like you can work for somewhere full time but especially in the beginning like as a, a lot of you will probably be like i don't know students or like have other jobs or like they're just like looking for the right job. And in that time, it, it really pays to like get part of a community, like find a protocol you like 
and just like go ham with the data on Dune. And like people will literally like give, like they will just like give you money if you provide them the data that is valuable. And over time, like you will kind of like be a, like be a far, like be a member of the team, but not like the core team, but like there's like, there's always a few community contributors uh, inside of these, uh, inside of these DAOs. So that's, that's basically like, so first I worked for Pickle and then there was like, um, I, I did some work for Harvest Finance. I don't know, like you guys are probably not familiar. That's a yield aggregator that was really hot at the time as well. Um, then I did some work for, maybe we can actually go into these dashboards. Um, then I did some work for, for Barnbridge. So I, I made like a big dashboard for them. And that was basically people um, at a certain point, like people who will start noticing you and like they will just like ask you like hey can you actually like do work for us as well and Banbridge basically reached out to me but for example for uh yearn finance so i guess all of you know yearn if you don't it's also a yield aggregator yield aggregators were really my thing uh back then um i basically made like a dashboard for them as well um and like you you just like you don't you don't ask for permission you don't ask for funding like beforehand like you can ask for funding beforehand if you are, if you have a proven track record but especially as you're starting out like just like go somewhere like find a protocol you love find a community that you that you vibe with and just like go in there and and do some work and people will like they like in almost like in all of the cases where i just like went into some project and did work for them like i was actually paid like really well like at some point like i i i am um, I did like a dashboard for where's this dashboard powerpool async art um not powerpool i did one for indexed um and i literally like i i was never in their discord before nobody knew of me and i just um dropped this dashboard into their into their like main channel i was like hey here's some data guys like um enjoy uh this dashboard is actually broken because they had a hack um, I've not checked this in quite some time, but um, they they literally like um, like somebody asked me for like uh, my ether wallet and like they just dropped me like five thousand dollars, and it's like it's it's crazy like that. Like um, people are really generous. Like people really value uh, Web three data analysts, and I think all of the successful like Dune creators are basically doing just this. Like they're following their curiosity kind of, and like they they just find projects that they find cool. And then they just start working. Of course, like you can you can check beforehand with like some of the mods or like the community in general. Like, hey, do you need doing stuff? Is somebody already covering this? Uh, would you be like willing to fund this? Um, but but like from from there on out, like you, you can ask like a lot of questions. Like you can ask questions to the community. You can go into the dev channels and like um, you can just like um, talk. Talk to the people in the community, basically. But in the end, it's like it's up to you if you actually like complete this work, if you actually do it. Um, that's like that's like one way, and I think that's actually the the coolest way of finding work. Of like you vibe with the community, like you you just like start working, and like eventually they they will pay you. It's like of course, like you take a certain risk of like the the protocol actually doesn't pay you, but then like what's the worst that can happen? It's like you learn something about this protocol and about querying like Web three data. So it's like really the worst case is really really not all that bad and like uh the the second order effect is also like if you like publish something that gets a lot of traction on dune um then like um your name will actually get out there and like over over time like you will collect these uh stars i guess um so stars are basically like the metric inside of dune to track like hey like how I don't know how successful is this research, how much favorites did, did the dashboard get? And like, if you are, if you appear like at some point on, on, on this list, like, I don't know, 500 stars is not that many. Like you, you make a few great dashboards and then you're basically like, if you show like anyone who's like in tune with web three data and stuff, like if you show them like, Hey, I have a Dune profile and there's like uh, 700 stars, like they will hire you on the spot because it's just like, it, it, it is a valuable, like it's a really, really valuable signal. And basically, so so like um, try to like find a protocol um, which you vibe with, and just like tr try working for them. Just like do work for free, basically, and then get paid afterwards. Like that's that's like a very common topic in 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 like working in Web three. And then like a, a second way is basically like um, you don't even try to work for money, but rather you just work for fame. So that's what um, Danner um, Danner has since switched to Flipside, but um, Danner is still a great friend of uh, of Dune. Um, so what Danner did at the start, he was basically like, he was just all over NFT data. He, th he, he just thought it was really interesting. 
and like um he was basically one of the first people to do this as well so he he did he did like pioneer work uh in in that area as well so so that's really cool and basically what he did is just like he he just farmed a bunch of engagement with this on twitter and like he he basically like um I don't know. He he was like all over all over the place. Like he's really well known like uh, across the NFT data space because like he he like basically premiered everything like this. And basically after after he had that much fame, like he really had like a lot of different job offers that he could have taken. So it's like you you can you can think of like there there's like one aspect to this which is like money, and then there's like the other aspect which is basically like fame or clout on on, on Twitter. And like the the second aspect is actually like maybe more valuable than money because like over time the leverage you get from that is can can get really high. So what Denner did at the start is basically like he worked for free. Like maybe he got some stuff, but uh, what he did was like he put a donation donation address down here somewhere. Uh, where is it? Uh, so just like a QR code. I think I don't actually know how he created this. Like I would need to need to find that out but you can create a qr code for your wallet and uh or just like uh put your ens name in there or or just like your your ether address and um people will actually uh donate to you so if we if we actually take a look at this wallet um oh, what's this uh oh there's an ether scan um you can see that like he has 163 um, transactions in there. I guess this is not all donations, uh, but a lot of it will be donations. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure that like quite a quite a few people actually donated money to him. So um, does it actually look like? Yeah, this probably is a donation. Uh, this probably is a donation as well. Uh, yeah, like um, that's that's a way, but that's like um, donations are not really reliable, and like you shouldn't like. It's a nice like side benefit from like if you go down this cloud way, then like maybe you will get some donations. But it's like people are not that generous. Like sadly, with with like data they uh, they find on Dune and like even like cite them in articles and stuff. Like I've been cited in like multiple articles and nobody ever reached out to me and was like, hey, here's some like hundred dollars for like providing this as open source data. Um, but it it is what it is. But like basically, um to to take another example there's like uh michael silberling he also like he either already did uh um see here no um but like he he's in these calls um m soap 7 so what he did was basically he he's also like he's he did a lot of engagement farming but it's like it's not even engagement farming he was just like uh legit interested in this stuff so he built a dashboard on eip uh 1559 you can see it has uh, 140 stars so that that's quite a lot for a dashboard um he did this like work for uniswap he did work for yearn um he basically worked with all the like big and great protocols and basically like he's a he's a fucking legend in the in the like data market like if anybody if anybody asked me like who's the best Dune creator like I, i'd say like michael of course like that can't be that that can't really be your inspiration but like um try to get your name out there because that's like a really valuable uh, thing to have. And like the, the job offers and like the like possibilities of working in this space, like over time, like you will just grow a network. Like I still got people reaching out to me today of like, hey, like um, I need some Dune work done. Like, do you have time? And of course, like now that I work at Dune, I don't have time anymore. But like um, if I would have like been like if I would have kept like just being a freelancer, like I, I, I um, like in, in that short time period where I was like good at Dune and not working at Dune, I literally had so many like uh, like people asking me about like, hey, can you like work for us? I, I was I, I had to turn down a lot of offers. Um, so like that's that's really like get your name out there, get known, like collect start. Like it, it sounds pretty stupid, but collect stars on you and collect Twitter followers. Um, really try to get your name out there, learn in public, like all, all the things that we that we always say in this in this course, like just don't don't be afraid of failing, like just fail forward. Um, so so that's like a very good way and uh michael has some like optimism dashboard on here and this optimism dashboard eventually actually led to him being hired by optimism um i don't actually i don't see the optimism dashboard uh i guess here's a like uniswap dashboard which compares uh ethereum and optimism um 
but yeah, like um, Michael has basically recruited himself into optimism and like, it's like, um, if I notice that you are, uh, like, you are like a great contributor to, to something like I will, like, I, I get a lot of like uh, DMs about like, Hey, like, can you recommend anyone? Then I will, I will recommend you like, uh, like everybody, like someone else from our community will recommend you. So it's just like building up this network and then like, eventually like you can either like, um, there's uh Kofi. Kofi has uh, done an amazing, oh, what's this like screen name actually? Nifty table. Um, so just telling you like about a few stories that I that I noticed here. So Michael is now working at Optimism, like he has actually started there. And then it's like uh, Nifty table, he does a lot of great stuff about like uh, NFT, uh, NFTs. And like, basically he has like a, a, a newsletter and like he's crunching NFT data. He posts a lot of great stuff. And now, as you can see, he's a partner at One Confirmation, and One Confirmation is like legit one of the uh, coolest VC funds in the space. And basically, uh, Kofi got there by just like putting himself out there, like starting a newsletter, doing whatever, and like um, eventually, like uh, Richard Chen, that's the that's like one that's like one of the partners uh, at One Confirmation and Nifty uh, and Kofi uh, connected, and, and now he's working there. Like, how how cool is that? And basically, I, I can tell you a lot of these stories, like um, Dr. Ethereum, um, I think he is uh, Trevor. I think Trevor is his real name. Like he has done the, um, he's working at Rebel Toll now and Rebel Toll um, has done a presentation here. So um, like he has also like, he has just done a lot of work on Dune and like eventually like people notice him and then he got in touch with the Rebel Hole people. And um, then it's just like, um, it's, it's a simple matter of like, yeah, like I actually want to work with you. Because it's like if you if you can show through your Dune profile, through your Twitter profile, through your like the public persona you're basically building in this metaverse, um, that you are like that you are able that you that you like stick in there that you are like um grinding grinding away um, then like people people will approach you and like if you actually approach people for like open positions um having like a a good Dune profile and a good Twitter profile and everything like that. Is like really the the key to getting to getting hired in Web three. So if if we hire people, like um, of course, like I I actually look at their Dune profile if they even have one, and then if they don't have a Dune profile, like I, I I look at their Twitter profile and I like I even like sometimes I check like which kind of people they're following and stuff. Like it's really like it's a way of like yeah, building this public persona really is like it's basically Twitter is your LinkedIn now. Like that's, that's how you can view it. And it can be fully anonymous. Like you don't need to dox yourself. You don't need to post like a, a picture of your face in there. It's just like, uh, Twitter is like hugely important. And then like a good Dune profile is also hugely important. And if you, if you can like spew, like if you can push alpha on Twitter, basically, um, then people, people will really love your account. And like, you will get approached by like VCs, hedge funds, like whatever. And they actually want you to work for them. Because like you, you've proven in public that you that you are able to like uh, to to do this stuff. Um, so um, yeah, I don't know. Is there is there questions about this? <laughs> there was a there was a twenty minute ramble on getting a job in Web three. <laughs> I hope this helps someone get a job. Um, yeah, what what else could I tell about that? Um, yeah, of course, uh, Dune is also hiring, so um, we will probably hire like a bunch more people in the next year. So um, if you if you really grind inside of Dune and if you like get like become a great part of our community, um, then there's also a possibility there. Um, but in general, like I think the the kinds of roles that I see for people is like um, so. For example, I think Michael is now doing like pretty hardcore data stuff with optimism. Um, then it's like uh, Nifty is doing like more like investments and stuff, but like supported by data. Um, so so he went down the VC or like investor route. So so that's a, like you can either join like technical technical teams of companies which actually need data or like the bus business development teams. Then you can join like uh, venture capitalists. And, and like those are pretty much like already like pretty big roles. And then of course, like um, I think the way I would have done this, like if I would have not joined Dune, is like I would have joined um, multiple DAOs and just been like their data guy and like just try to keep like all the Dune dashboards like on 
on like online and up to date and and everything like that and basically like uh try to try to make a deal with them of like hey you pay me like x amount per year and so i keep these dashboards online and then um then that that would have been the deal i i would have gone for but there's like there's a million possibilities out there like this is a like um being a web3 data analyst and just like understanding web3 uh really inside out is a really valuable place to be in in general um so i i like some of you can probably get like like if you like after this course if you like stick it like if you really go for it like one more month then you can probably like you can apply if, almost anywhere and you will like not almost anywhere but it's like where people actually need the skills that we tr we trained you to have here um you you could probably get a job like it's like people are like not like your experience level wouldn't be quite on the on the scale um there but it's like people are desperate for for people with a skill set that that we are trying to teach you here so um i i i really i really don't doubt that if if every and each one of you like actually like uh put in the hours like keep on the grind like actually try to like do innovative shit and like uh really get into the weeds of like uh, web3 data like then you, you'll be golden like there's no there's no way you'll you won't find a job um that's that's basically like what i can say and then it's like your your like cv before this doesn't even matter like for, for me like if we hire for dune like i'm like yeah like cool this guy studied something at university and it's like yeah he can apparently he's good at like uh like being in the university system and like it's actually like university systems carry some weight but it's like i'm much more interested like what has he actually done in crypto or like in web3 like w what is his credentials here like has he done like uh uh prs to like uh some some protocol has he fixed some bugs like has he written like docs is he like an active governance participant is he like does he have a like twitter account like every everything like that is basically like your your like cv from before crypto doesn't doesn't really matter anymore of course like if somebody has studied mathematics or something hardcore like that i'm like oh yeah like this this guy is legit but it's like the the web3 experience uh really 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 weighs a lot uh in, in this market currently because there's just there's very few people um who are looking for jobs and who have the skill set that people need to work in web3 so I, I see it in a lot of companies that they are like uh resorting to actually hiring web2 people so people who are like not native to the space and actually teaching them on the job what it means to work in web3 and stuff like that so like you're already like one step further because you are already like in this course and you're actually like engaged and like you're all now like you have pops in your wallets now and like you you actually like you have used coordinate like everything like that like that's all onboarding you to the culture of crypto and like web3 native people are really like they're in such hot demand uh it's it's like the the market is really really hot um so yeah that's that's about all i all i can say about uh crypto jobs i think this 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 settles it now um so yeah if there's um if you guys like want to throw me some some topic like i'm i'm happy to like uh walk you through it i'm i'm not gonna attempt to do live currying today after the uh, epic fail yesterday i would actually need to prepare something so uh, i've not done that today but like if there's like simple things that we can maybe solve um i'm i'm happy to to take use boxer i had a question uh so so the entire thing that the, the data that we have on the uh, by the way uh, i really like the passion to switch that really was <laughs> good uh i, I was just wondering, wondering that the entire defi space or the web3 space as of now is like so whatever the data that we have we are seeing that's primarily is it's either on ethereum chain or the other two chains right so let's say if i'm interested in something like other l1 chains So how do I even tackle the analytics there? I'm pretty sure the other chains are in the process of development and stuff like that. So if I want to get a slight exposure of how the other people or the different chains are doing the same thing that we're doing here, mm -hmm. so how do I even approach this problem? Uh, so basically, like as an example, like you want to query for data on Solana, like that that would be mm -hmm. like the first thing that comes to mind. Um, obviously yes. like Dune, Dune is working on onboarding these and then it's basically a, like you can probably walk into like a few discords of like famous like big Solana projects and just be like hey I want like what's the analytics tools here 
and people like somebody will probably know like just try to just try to find the analytics tools but um honestly i don't think the analytics space for the other chains is even there yet like um dune is still pretty small compared to like uh, yeah compared to the size of the space and it's like um and like nansen is doing stuff but they also have like ethereum and like and you can't do 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 stuff on your own there but like they are indexing ethereum and polygon data um and the exe chain um then it's like uh flip side um does uh terra data so luna is the token for terra um they they have that mm. kind of data and then there's a few projects which are trying to do this for solana um, but um, the way, like what I hear from the from the streets, is basically that all of them are pretty much crap, and, and like they only go back like seven days, and like it's it's just like it's not a good experience. Um, so I'm I'm happy to tell you that uh, Dune will actually integrate Solana, um, probably first quarter of uh, 2022. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and, and more chains as well. Like it's just like we don't have the engineering capacities to like onboard every chain at once. So um, yeah, but we'll we'll get there eventually. Bye. Right. Yeah, if there's no questions, I might just go. Um, we can just like uh, go into Dune and browse a few dashboards. And actually, uh, I can show you a new feature that was released today on Dune um we now have uh, trending dashboards so we have the uh, sort by uh, favorites so favorites in the last 7 30 whatever days and then we also have a category that's trending now and if you really want to like um see the hot new shit um this is a this is a good way to to find that um so just a interesting new feature that that Dune has to offer um so basically this is the most clicked dashboards in the last uh, 24 hours um so if we go in here there's probably the airdrop dumper is it in here it's not in here anymore that's sad um but this great dashboard that i think ruvark is his screen name oh yeah there it is ens dumpers <laughs> uh, but uh, that's actually not from yeah but whatever um you you can see you can see like the new dashboards in here and i guess um what we can do, or is there actually questions in chat for lectures? Um, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, good thing that I uh, that I answered this. Um, so I guess what we can just do is um, we can go into a couple of these dashboards and try to find out what's happening. So one thing that I thought was really interesting is like apparently there's a decentralized casino. Um, and uh, I, I just thought that that was a cool idea. So the decentralized casino ex apparently exists on uh, Polygon. And um, this is a bunch of marketing talk from them, I guess. Number, number one, decentralized games on Polygon powered by Chainlink. That's actually cool. Uh, less than 1% house edge. Uh, no black box, no signups, no deposits. Uh, that all sounds pretty cool. And they had the 517,000 bets. That's insanity. So... If I now, um, if I'm like, hey, like, what, what, what is this data actually? Like, is this data correct? Like, let's just um, take a look at this query and. Okay. Um, so apparently, this contract is not decoded, which is a bit sad. Um, but maybe we can just understand it together. So we're just gonna like take a look at this contract um, because this is this is really like. Um, it's basically social learning, right? Like the concept that I talked about yesterday as well. Um, like oh, polygon scan. Um, the fact that you can just go into any dashboard and just be like, hey, like how does this actually work? Um, is really, really powerful. Um, so basically what we can do here is we can just run this in isolation and hopefully it's, oh, this is probably going to take a while. Bad count roll, bad count matic, bad count crystal, bad count kogi. I don't know what kogi is. I think some meme coin maybe. Um, 
But basically, like, what I'm trying to think of here is, like, wh what is this guy actually querying for? And it seems like he counts all the transactions where the receiver is this contract. And what he then does is, um, so success is true. So uh, an, an, an actually, like, uh, successful transaction. And then uh, this is a bit confusing to me. But I think this is basically, he's encoding the data. So that's topic... Oh no, he's actually like polygon dot transactions should be just uh, let's just oh, I actually can't um let's just take this for a second uh study the polygon dot transactions table uh, again um I want to select uh all from polygon transactions. Uh, let's limit this to 100 so it actually returns something really quick and oh, wrong chain um, polygon dot transactions what's what's wrong with this uh, that's weird Okay, no, it's running. What? Uh, this is like live coding is the worst. I'm telling you guys, don't try it. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's like it's so horrible. Uh, so there we go. Um, he's looking at the data column. And uh, as we've learned previously, um, what is in this data column is actually the stuff we see down here. And basically, he's uh, he's encoding the data in there. And he's looking for uh, this, this string or this string. And basically, what that tells me um, just by assuming something now is like um, that this will, like from his query as well, um, this will probably be the uh, the just like this is the contract where people actually place bets. Um, we can actually decode the input my encode data. Ah, oh, that's that's really nice. Um, yeah, and and that way he just counts this, and probably he he actually filters this for uh, for this thing um, because that's the only um, bet count row. There's probably more transactions in there which like which I don't know of currently, but uh, let's check. It's just place bet. So now I'm wondering, like, maybe this is actually, like, not needed. Um, because he's just... Seems to be uh, just place bet. So what we could do now is we could go into polygon.transactions and select distinct and then whatever he's creating here for. Um, but actually, like, if I just want to, like, briefly understand, like, what he's doing, I'm just going to be like, hey, like, this is actually enough information for me. And then it's like, uh, he queries another contract. So I guess he has multiple different contracts or this, uh, this, this project has multiple different uh, contracts. And, like, you can see here somebody is playing with role. And um, as it says here, uh, it, it, this is the transaction with role. Um, then this this smart contract will probably be the same thing, just with matic tokens. Um, so let's check that real quick. Let's go into one transaction. Oh, this is not it. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Ah, wait. Yeah, right. The matic tokens don't show up in here. They don't show up in tokens transferred. They 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 show up in the value column, right? Um, like like we uh found out previously in uh, Ethereum transactions. Um. They actually show up in here and not in the ERC twenty dot event transfer thing. So basically, this is uh, Ether scans or Polygon scans um, ERC twenty event transfer table, and like it, the Matic will not show up in there. Um, but we can see the Matic here. So this seems to be the Matic token. Uh, the Matic, uh, yeah, the the Matic table. Um, then this is probably the Crystal table that will just be another currency. This is the Koga table, and then he just. Um, this is actually a pretty ugly way of uh, of querying for this, but um, it I guess it works. Um, he's just uh, adding up all the counts, and uh, yeah, 
that way he gets to this uh, total amount of bets and I actually believe him. So um, that way we have quickly understood like, hey, like how does this work? And then we can probably go uh, somewhere else. All time volume, poly roll volume. Ah, so here he, he just um, sums up the different Yep, he sums up the different values for for the for the different um, smart contracts. So volume roll, volume matic, and um, he just um, I guess he doesn't add them up. Uh, he just make like makes two different counters out of this uh, matic volume, roll volume. Yeah, seem seems very reasonable. Um, then maybe we can we can take a look at this total bets matic, total bets roll, total bets. Uh, we we kind of like covered this right now. Like um, this will just be the same queries, just uh, like over time. Um, bet token distribution. This will also kind of. Oh, there's actually a USDC contract in here. That's interesting, because he doesn't have the USDC uh, contract in here, right? So that's something I would investigate now. Is that the right? Um, just to like. Just to understand what's happening here, um, something that that will really help you in uh, understanding what's happening. Uh, select case when two, then roll, then matic. Oh, okay. Um, so apparently there is a contract which has um, USDC as well. Um, so here there is a USDC contract and. Um, if there was a common function on you now, I would tell this guy like, hey, you're actually missing your USDC stuff in here. Um, because I don't... Oh man, I closed the polygon scan window. That was not what I wanted to do. Um... Uh, um... Yeah, this is actually not the polygon contract. Um, <laughs> so much is sure. And yeah, um, this guy apparently forgot to include the polygon bets in here. So maybe the polygon bets were added as a new feature and he just uh, didn't bother to, to update these. Um, interesting. Let, let's, let's see when the first event was. Uh, this seems to have been around for some time. So that's actually it's quite strange. 50 days ago. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes stuff like that happens. And that's always like... Yeah, like now you can actually say like, hey, is this dashboard creator a good creator or not? And it's like, now you can kind of see like, hmm, maybe I should check the other things as well because uh, there, there's like stuff missing. But this is just like a very minor thing. Like I, 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 I don't discount this whole dash dashboard now because he forgot to, to include these uh, USDC bets in there. But actually it seems to be quite a lot of, um, and why am I always closing this? Uh, there's a shortcut to like open this again. Uh, Instead of use, use uh, control shift T, use shift T. Yeah, yeah, it will open the last news tab automatically, whatever the last tab that it closed. Yeah, uh, that's good to know. Um, but there's actually uh, 40,000 transactions. So that's actually interesting that like, that this would add like 10% almost um, to this number. Um, so yeah, interesting that he, that he forgot about that. Um, Polyroll games analysis, so that's not something we're interested in because we... Oh, actually, this is like, he, he has split it by games. So that's actually something I'm interested in because like, how does this actually look like in a... Man, he should have really submitted these contracts for decoding. I'm actually kind of impressed that he was able to do this without decoding decoded contracts. Um, but it, like, um, yeah, like, this is a good lesson for you. Like, please submit your contracts for decoding because otherwise your queries will look like this. And then it's like, if we go in here now and try to understand this, it's like, it's pretty fucking tough. Um, so it's like, of course, nobody really needs to understand your dashboard, but it's just, it makes it easier for you and it makes it easier for other people to audit your dashboard. So it's like, if you can, please, like, <laughs> please actually submit them for decoding, even though, yeah, I can kind of like, sometimes I can understand people because it's just like, you don't need to wait for us to decode the smart contracts. And if you just want to get work done, then it's like, it's just easier um to do this but um yeah if you can work with decoded data would be nice um so what we're seeing here um so apparently there's some 
Modulo um, column and he when he constructs this Modulo column uh, outside of the data column and if we think back a few seconds um, then we can see that the smart contracts are actually verified on um, on etherscan so we can just like open up the call data decode the call data and then we see modulo so modulo seems to be the um basically the kind of game you are playing with this uh with this smart contract so he obviously has the token mapping down and he's like uh so two is a coin flip six is a dice roll 37 is roulette and then what he basically does is like uh get games played Okay, union. Okay. So I guess um, that this would be the matey contract and that these contracts are the to uh, the token contract. Because if you if you think back, there was uh, five different tokens and um, the matey token, because it is the native token, like let's actually uh, try to verify this analysis that I just did. Um, Hopefully this really is the matic contract now, otherwise I'm at a loss. Um, let's see. And it is actually the, so you can see um, 2.5 matic have been transacted or let's go into something else. Uh, it's also 2.5 matic, but there's no other like ERC20 uh, transactions in here. So you can be pretty certain that um, this will, like I, I think this, this chain link uh, stuff that's just um, that comes from the smart contracts because, um, as it says in the parent dashboard, uh, they're using uh, the the chainlink oracle. So you actually have to pay the chainlink oracle a bit um, because you're using it. Um, I don't know if the user takes note of this. If you actually need chainlink to like transact with this, um, but what I would do now, like because that would be the easiest way to research, like I would actually go into this casino and because transaction on Matic actually costs nothing, um, or like they cost very, very little, like 0.03 cents. No, three cents. Um, Like I would just go in there and, and try to find out, but I would guess that this actually happens in the back end. So what we could try to do is find the, oh man, um, find the transaction where, um, what I'm trying to say, where the chain link is transacted, but, um, it doesn't interest me that much that I'm, ah, oh, actually this, this could be the, uh, let's try to open this contract. Uh, so this is the chain link token. Okay. And now I'm basically trying to find out like, where does this, oh, this is already decoded. Um, where does this originate from? Does this originate from the user's wallets or does it originate from some contract from uh, Polyroll? And it seems like, yeah, the Polyroll contract actually has a bunch of chain link in it. Um, so now I know like the Polyroll contract is actually paying for this uh, with its chain link tokens. So um, yeah, that's all uh, pretty just interesting stuff. Um, now we kind of know like how this works. They basically have a bunch of contracts where you can uh, transmit like any of these five currencies. Then there's like a Modulo thing you can call, um, which basically determines the game. Um, of course you, you don't do this like uh, through Etherscan or Polygon, but like, it's actually like, but this is just like how the smart contract architecture. And then it's like, uh, the contract actually pays chain link for the random, random number generator, I guess. And, um, that's pretty much like how this works. And in that way, like we, we very quickly have assessed like by the work of someone else, um, how, how this game or like how the smart contracts of this game kind of work. Um, so now if you have like a similar game or like a fork of this, you would be very easily uh, able to, to just um, copy this work or like um, maybe just take inspiration from this. If you if you ever like encounter something similar, you're like, hey, I've seen this dashboard and you can go back to the code. Uh, you can kind of look into it and be like, yeah, like um, I can actually make, make work of some of these code. Um, Polyroll daily unique addresses. Um, this is also weird that he hasn't included USDC and all the other stuff in there. Um, so I don't know, there's some improving uh, for this dashboard, I guess, but in general, it's like, it's a, it's a pretty good, like, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good um, way to like uh, get a feel of like, how does this project actually work? So that's pretty cool. Um, so somebody, 
man, people are crazy. <laughs> he has bet, like in total, 157,000 USDC. And he has uh, not profited. Uh, yes, he has lost uh, 5,000. But uh, who's the guy with the most profits? There's one guy who's uh, $3,500 in profits. There's one guy who's 20,000 matic up. That's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, interesting. Interesting to have uh, data on on casinos uh, that that publicly available. I guess that's like usually that's like quite a industry secret in the like betting betting industry. Uh, like nobody wants to talk about numbers because then nobody would actually pay casinos. Um, but here it's all it's all on the chain. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, yeah, and and that like just like that we have kind of like we have at least like we have a like broad understanding like how does this project actually work, um, and basically you can you can do that for for everything right, um, GM analytics, uh, GM is like this oh it's actually empty that sucks, um, let's just go back, um, what is Angel. So sometimes this can also be a way to like learn of new projects. If I'm like, I'm, I have no idea what, uh, like, I, I, I like. It seems to me that uh, Angel seems to be um, a dashboard on uh, euros that are bridged on the blockchain. So if we just go to uh, the creator of this dashboard, he kindly um, provided his stuff on here. Ah, so there's first version of Angel Protocol, Dune Analytics dashboard. Okay, um, so we go to Angel Protocol, then we go to docs.angel.money, and okay, over collateralized, decentralized, capital efficient stablecoin protocol. Um, yeah, we have a lot of uh, stablecoins already, um, but it seems there's one more now. Um, so yeah, now now that we know that, um, let's try to. Oh, and I need to. Clean up my browser. Oh, I don't want to save that. And so we can see the angel price. So I guess angel is the governance token. So the price actually uh, flying around is not that like uh, that bad. And then apparently there is uh, 88 million uh, angel euros. So that's quite interesting. And uh, angel euros already have a market share of 24% in the uh, in the like crypto euro uh, 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 market. Uh, so uh, if anybody is not familiar, euro is the currency of the European Union. <laughs> so I, maybe I need to explain that, but I, I guess not. But you never know. You never know. Um, so this, this protocol seems to be focused on um, bringing euros onto the blockchain. So um, I guess where is um, angel euro? Um, if we look into this query, it's probably just a bunch of ERC20 transfers. Um, yeah, there it is, ERC20 transfers, um, more ERC20 transfers. Um, what type is no, blah, blah, blah. Um, stacking, what does it mean? I think he means staking. Um, so basically, I think you can stake your, um, we can actually try to find this uh there it is um so is this on mainnet i guess this is on mainnet um so we just like go into this um actually try to track down on some of the contracts and if we look into here now it's probably like yeah it's staking rewards so apparently if you stake your um angel euros uh so ag euro um in here uh, you get some kind of staking rewards um so maybe we can confirm that on the website real quick let's go to the app uh yes oh, it's not showing me anything yeah not connecting my ledger here um but yeah that's basically that's basically how how this would um like I, I just go in here now and like yeah there's a staking page but I can't see it because I am not connected right now but uh, don't really want to connect at the moment so uh, let's just go back to here um, I don't know where's the uh, where's the euros um, this this will all just be like a bunch of um, 
uh, ERC20 event transfer ta tables. Um, basically what he has done in here is probably um, Uh, this is basically the stable coins he's trying to track. Um, this is the treasuries. I don't know what he's doing with the treasury thing. Um, wait. Ah, he's doing a bunch of stuff in this, uh, in this query. That's why it looks a bit complicated. Um, filler, fusion, grouped, balances. Interesting. Where does he pull this data? Transfer volume. This should be the total. I think this is the total supply, but um, I'm kind of at a loss where he pulls this from. Um, DT balance and symbol. Uh, balance is a very weird way of uh naming supply symbol date trunk delta partition okay i see yeah basically he's just constructing a, a bunch of things in here um and he's actually um he's importing a lot of data so basically what he or like he's he's building reference tables for himself so basically what he does here is like uh, he says like stable coins because these stable coins apparently do not exist in the ESC20 tokens table, um, which you guys should be familiar with. So basically, this information usually is in the uh, ESC20 tokens table, but either he doesn't know about this table or these. Um, I think these tokens are probably not in there because the synthetic euro market is very, or the crypto euro market is very like a very niche topic. Um, so I'm I'm not surprised that these tokens aren't in there. And basically what he does here is basically he constructs his own ERC20 tokens table. And for him, it's just Euro stable coins. Uh, then he selects uh, treasuries. And what he does with these treasuries, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, but we can just uh, search for uh, treasuries inside of this query and actually find out. Um, Okay, that's even more confusing. Um, ah. I think he's basically um, looking. Um, so basically uh, the, the way he classifies treasury here is that this is the place where the tokens get minted. And it seems to me that uh, Euro T um, get minted in, in this and everything else gets minted in here. So basically that's why he's also, that's why he's calling this balance. Um, so basically like he just tracks like, um, where do these um, tokens actually uh, originate or like, um, yeah, where, where have these tokens been minted or like, uh, no, the other way around. Um, give me all the transactions where the tokens have been minted inside of the treasury. And that way he basically then uh, assigns, a, yeah, he basically tracks the mints of, of these uh, of these stable coins. And I think he also has to track the, yeah, where to and where from. So he's tracking minting, minting and burn events uh, of these ERC20 tokens. Um, I think there's simpler queries to do this, but I guess this is one way. Um, so that's cool. And um, yeah, basically like now we've understood this query, like well, what he's doing in here as well. And like um, that way, like you, you can very easily like just like walk around you and, and like you can just um, kind of find out like, hey, well, what are people up to? What is happening? How does this protocol work? How does uh, like whatever work? And I really encourage you to do this. And maybe you even want to like um, try to do this next week in, inside of the focus groups or like uh, team up with a few people and, and just like try to understand stuff um, on your own or like um, if you don't like get anywhere, you can ask Andrew and me, but uh, really like this is, a, this is a superpower if you're able to do this. And um, sometimes this will be really complicated stuff. And then it's like, it's, uh, it's really up to you to like try to find out like what's actually happening here. And like, 
um in in that way like you can really learn well though because like uh a lot of times like i tried to show you yesterday i just fought my own queries and yesterday it didn't work but in a lot of cases it actually works so it's uh um it, it's it's really a superpower to have like this um this archive or this library of queries which you basically like need to kind of keep in your head and you always need to be like oh which which creator actually created this and uh, a lot of time like a lot of stuff like that um but it really is um it really is a superpower if you can if you can uh, if you can do this well um so yeah i think that's that's it for the day i'm i'm not going to uh do do a longer longer stuff stuff a well uh uh longer lecture and uh yeah that's it for today i hope uh, i was able to teach you guys something um and yeah see you on monday i think andrew has the home i hope andrew does homework assignments or already has i'm kind of like we are a bit out of sync this week um <laughs> but uh we'll we'll make sure to to uh to really uh, offer you guys a great next week uh, a great finish to to all of this next week um yeah really um keep keep the homework going i've i've been very impressed by what all of you guys have been have been doing so far um enjoy your weekend um don't work too much also go outside <laughs> that's what i'm gonna be doing and uh yeah bye bye thanks, thanks boxer. Boxer. Thank, thank you, you boxer. Boxer. Thank, Thank you. you.